Okay, we're going to talk about DNA sequencing in this video. So, DNA sequencing, we'll just write it up here. So it's a powerful molecular tool that we can use to quickly determine the sequence of bases in DNA. So if you're wondering um, what, say if you have this protein right here, and it's coded, and we have this folded protein, and we want to read what the sequence of DNA that codes for these individual amino acids is, and thus gives us the, uh, the sequence of this gene that codes, say, like a mutated protein in a cancer, you would use this technique. So this technique was originally developed by Frederick Sanger in the 1970s, and it's called the dideoxy sequencing method. So we will write that here. So dideoxy sequencing. So essentially what it is, um, the, it, it relies, it's based on replication, so it relies on the fragment to be sequenced as used as a template, and that's used to make a series of different molecules. So I've kind of drawn out the process here, but first I want to explain what the dideoxy di means. So if you look at a, like a normal DNA is synthesized from deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates, so a normal one is, we'll draw this over here, it, just DNTP, which stands for D oxyribonucleoside triphosphate. So if you were looking at an adenine, it would be DATP, right? Um, so dideoxy is DDNTP, and it essentially terminates synthesis. And the reason being is because the molecular structure of it, if we draw that down here as well, looks like without the, we'll just do a little, this is your phosphate group right here, and then you have your sugar and your base right here. So normally, DNA has a hydrogen and a three-primed uh, hydroxyl group, but in dideoxy, it is just another H. So there's no three prime hydroxyl group and without that you cannot add another nucleotide to the DNA sequence. So how that plays a role here is it, take, it terminates the replication of the DNA. So how this all came together is you have um, four reactions. So you have this template and this primer that you use for, so you need to know the primer of the gene that you're trying to sequence. So you have your template that's uh, from three, five, three prime to five prime and then your, your primer that's on the three primed end of the template. Um, so all four uh, deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates and DNA polymerase, DNA ligase are all added in right here. So you would have, let's write them all out, you'd have your DATP, DGTP, DCTP, um, and DTTP, and then DNA polymerase, all right? So that's all added in right here. And then that um, is split up into four different things. And to each one of these things is added a certain um, dideoxyribonucleoside. So let's say in this one, we add, I'll do this in another color, dideoxy um, adenosine triphosphate. And in this one, we do dideoxy cytosine and then guanine and then thymine. Right, so then here you have your template once again that's from right here with your primers attached. And then in this, we'll, we ha we'll have a bunch of synthesis going on. So when the um, nucleotides are added to the three prime end of the primer with the target DNA being used as the template here, and you would have a bunch of strands that, let's do this in uh, green, I guess. And you'd have, so you'd have your primer right here. Let's just do three strands here. And then we'll do the primer. And then we'll do the primer. Primer. And then we have the strand that's being synthesized. So let's say this one goes, and it's actually pretty long. And then we terminate with a dideoxy adenine triphosphate, right? Because that's terminate synthesis. And let's say this one gets stopped right here and this one gets stopped right here. 
and then right here we have one that's being stopped over here that's a C and then one right here that gets stopped and then right here a G just one of them and then for thiamine we have one that goes right to the end and one that goes halfway so basically what this means is this is just when the dideoxy ATP gets incorporated into the template or the replication molecule so it could happen at any time you want it to happen often because you want to have as many of these as possible so then when you um, when you uh, the synthesis terminates at a different position on the different strands so this generates the set of DNA fragments that are all various lengths and they each end in a dideoxynucleotide with the same base. So every one of these ones ends with an A from this tube, and every one of these ones ends with a C from this tube. Every one of these ends with a G from this tube, and every one ends with a T from this tube. So these fragments are produced in each reaction is separated with gel electrophoresis. So let's just say that we have something that looks like this. We'll do this in red. We have an A gel right here, and then we have a G gel right here and then a T, and then we have a C, and a G, and then let's pretend an A, and then back to G again, and then we have a C, two T's, and then we finish off with an A, and another G to finish it off. So what does this actually mean? So each one of these is migrating based on the length of the DNA molecule, right? The size of it. So this one that didn't go too far might be this strand right here. And then this one that went kind of halfway would be this one. And then this one that traveled the furthest would be this one, right? And then you have all these sequences that are separated at different points. And then you can actually look at this gel electrophoresis and then make a, um, a, a complementary strand. So based on this, you would write right here, we'd have the A and then G, T, C, G, A, G, C, T, oops, T, T, A, G, right? So that is your three prime to five prime, and then you just make the sequence of the originate, original template strand by doing the complete opposite of this. So this would be, we'll do this in another color, T, C, A, G, G, C, T, C, G, A, A, T, C. And that is your five prime to three primed. Bring that out. And that is your original template strand. And then you have the sequence of the original DNA that you were trying to find. So say that this was, um, let's say the P53 protein and you were trying to figure out the gene that codes for it, right? So you took that P53 protein and you got the gene for it. You found its primers and then you wanted to sequence the entire DNA, so we, you would use this process. Um, so just a reminder, each one of these tubes, you're adding uh, many copies of this primer because you want it, you have the template and you want it to synthesize as much as possible. Um, you have the all four types of the uh, deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates, which is the normal precursor for DNA synthesis. And then you have a small amount of each one of these added to each separate tube. So if we have tube one, two, three, four, they only contain this type of deoxy, dideoxy uh, ribonucleoside. And then this one only contains guanine, and this one only contains cytosine, and this one only contains adenine. So each one of the sequences always ends with an A. And then you put that into the first well. And then in this one, so if we have our wells right here, that you would be putting these DNA molecules into and they would all separate based on their size and then you have a full sequence of the protein and that is your p53 uh, gene sequence that codes and trans transcribes the p53 protein